Hi guys, it's Summers here, joining me for my second round of the F1 2018 Career Mode Series. And as you can see, I'm just undertaking the uh, track acclimatisation programme in the free practice sessions. Um, going relatively well, I'm on the third lap and I'm obviously trying to get the, the higher bonus uh, of resource points so that we can spend those points later on, on developing the car. Um, I'm going to come clean about something at the start of this episode um, in terms of we understand that, that the last Grand Prix I was had the AI level set way too low. Uh, we had it set at 50 and I was going to try to increase that for, for this race just so that we could um, get a better measure of where I am in compared to, to the AI setup. But unfortunately I didn't realise where the menu was and I've already, I already went into that Grand Prix uh, without changing the mode so yeah bit of a disaster unfortunately for this episode so instead what I decided to do is um, I've, I've decided to try and handicap myself in another way um, in terms of reducing the level of assists so in free practice one I'm down to medium on the traction control which when I'm using a pad it is going to have a bit of a bearing um, in terms of how you get the power down and how the car manoeuvres throughout the corners, etc. So, uh, hopefully, that's enough to appease those that think that the, the AI is a bit low, um, and we'll obviously just see how that unfolds during the, the qualifying session. So, as we skip through to the uh, program select, there you could just see that obviously a purple bow has picked up the. The, the resource points that are required and I'm just going to come to the end of the lap with the tyre wear uh, programme and, and show you the fact that we cleared that for purple on the first lap um, seem to be getting on okay with the tyre wear around around the track uh, just quickly skipping on we're going to move on to the fuel management programme uh, see how we, we're doing in terms of saving fuel around this particular Best circuit. So far is a one minute, and we skip towards the end of the lap again. Uh, as you can see, I'm right up to the top in terms of the, the purple sector. So fuel saving seems to be okay on this track. Um, but unfortunately, FP1's a bit of an unrepresentative um, time to, to try these, these sort of things. Purely because obviously the, the time of day when the, the Grand Prix is held, the, the air temperature, the track temperature. focus entirely on the race, but we should put a bit of time aside to run the qualifying sim program. Try to run it before the end of FP3 if you can. Yeah, so the, the track and, and temperatures etc are obviously a, a bit lower because you're going into dusk for the actual uh, race scenario. So it wasn't perhaps the best time to run all of these programs, but you've only got so much time to get through them all and uh, just wanted to get them un under underway and, and move on with the rest of the practice session. So this is the ERS management program, which again cleared quite easily. And um, we, we're down to the last few minutes of free practice one now. So we've cleared four of the programs um, in, in first practice. And uh, yeah, that, that's gone quite well, especially considering I've obviously turned the traction control down to, to medium I'm, I'm okay with that that level our best lap so far is a one minute 33.4 and we'll move on to the other programs in in free practice too and, and pick up on those and, and clear the bar uh, to get those extra resource An points interesting when it comes practice to it. session there then let's remind ourselves of the top three who are the professor Bottas and Kimi Raikkonen that's it for practice then. We'll see you again soon. Amazing performance out there. You must be really happy. Let's just see what uh, really questions Claire's got for us. Today. Are you testing new components? You were flying in practice. Do you think you can carry this over to qualifying? You scraped the walls a few times. Were you struggling for grip? Appreciate your time. So as we know, those questions that we get asked by 
uh, Claire there, can have an impact on the development and resources. So if you answer them in a certain way, different departments can be motivated by them or, or have an issue with them. And as we just see that we're picking up some extra resource points, so we're back up to a thousand resource points. And we move on into the uh, one of the, the next practice programs, and we can see that basically I've cleared the bar on the first two laps. The race strategy program is obviously complete at that point, and um, I do just trundle on for a, a few more laps just to see um, how we how we perform on the, on those tyres. So as you can see as we round the, the corner, the last corner on lap four, we've, we've stayed green uh, throughout, we're, we're picking up time all the time. And yeah, I, I was quite happy with Bahrain to be honest. I didn't expect to be as quick as I was around that circuit. As all the so. cars are now over the line, your top three again are Raikkonen, Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. That concludes an interesting practice session. Let's hope for more excitement as the weekend unfolds. So yeah, that, we just skipped out to practice three there. There wasn't really much to talk about in terms of what was going on with the car in the rest of those practice sessions. And as you can see, I just picked up a few more resource points and we can see the reputation on the move with my team and the other teams. As before we move into the more, most important session qualifying. So, for qualifying, I have decided that just ramping the assist to medium is clearly not enough because we're in P1 in qualifying one and that was my first lap out and I'm just going to fast forward through the session because yeah, I was way ahead of the rest in, in qualifying one. Okay, so we're just going to follow my progress around the lap in qualifying two. I'm on the soft tyre rather than the super soft because as what we did in um, the previous race at Australia, I'm going to try the alternative strategy starting on, a, on the, the harder of the, the compounds in order that it opens up our strategy options. Um, that's why not, if we can make it through to qualifying three uh, and, and and basically get within the top 10 in this section of qualifying, then we may as well try, try our hand at it. So yeah, I'm still not 100% with this track, the feeling of the car, etc. but the times aren't too bad. And um, yeah, just progressing really. Just the, My biggest problem with doing this career mode is that it's truncated, so I don't always get to do all of the sessions in one go. In fact, this recording uh, probably stretched out over uh, three different recording sessions. Free practice was split up into two sections, and so trying to get comfortable with the car after uh, not spending time with it and just literally diving out there, it can be problematic at times, but you know, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. We're going to have to live with that factor. As we cross the line here, we are P1 Fantastic. That was the fastest lap. on the soft tyre. And we're just going to continue on around here. Turn two, the pub and the curve for turn three. We've got the ERS set to maximum and hot lap. I've not adjusted those, so we're we're still continuing with that level of um, extra performance. And as we can see, I'm, I'm still up further on my time and Hamilton's actually gone faster at this point. So we're gonna hang with this lap. We're a bit too much over the curb there. I'm being distracted by Grosjean, I think. Um, still not getting on too well with having other drivers in my field of vision uh, when I'm doing qualifying laps. And yeah, that's having a bit of an uh, impact. But we're still up on the Delta, so Let's just see how this, the rest of this lap unfolds. Still P2 to Hamilton. 
get better at this this uh, sequence of corners later on in the the weekend. I feel. Um, but yeah, familiarisation with the circuit and the game in general. Yeah, it just gets better as, as we go on. So as we round the last corner, I'm down in P3 at the moment. Delta's looking uh, quite good. And I popped it up into first position. And we're just going to scroll forward from, from here, um, time-wise, because... Well, we, we've, we've done a decentish lap. And I feel that that is good enough to take us out of Q2 and into Q3. So coming out at the end of that session, as we can see, I managed to get through qualifying two with a soft tyre, as did Botas, Vettel and Ricardo. So we all start on the soft tyre uh, for the race. And um, the rest in the top ten will have to start on the super soft that they've just qualified on. So as we move into uh, qualifying three, you'll notice that I'm having a few more lockups because of the ABS uh, function being turned off for this session. Fastest lap again, but I don't expect to hold that position um, because my pace, although it's better, is. I'm compromised by having turned some of the assists down, so I think we need to do that though, in terms of you know the fact that I couldn't turn the AI down, at least I've got to try and handicap myself in some way. I did actually think about taking a, a gearbox penalty to drop myself down 10 places on the grid, uh, just as a way of penalising us for not being able to turn the AI down, or sorry, turn the AI up for this particular race. So yeah, as you can see, we finished uh, P4 in the end in in, F, in qualifying three. So that's where we'll start from tomorrow on the grid. And I'm leading the teammate battle, obviously, um, against Ocon. And we're picking up some more of the resource points that we can spend on development later down the line, another 170. Reputation with the other teams has improved, as with my own team. All right, I think we can call that a successful qualifying. We should be in with a good chance in the race. I hopefully do think we should be in with a good chance. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. So yeah, just looking at the strategy here, uh, in terms of the tyre wear that we had in Australia, really thought there might be an opportunity to try to extend the stint length on, at, at the beginning of the race on, on the soft tyre that we'd obviously qualified on in um, qualifying two. And then that obviously would then mean that we could do something different towards the end of the race. We could perhaps have done a two-stopper if we'd have took the medium and the second stint. But I kind of looked at the options and thought, well, perhaps we do two uh, super soft runs at the end of the, the, the Grand Prix um, rather than being out there and, and perhaps catching up to traffic, etc. So... Yeah, just playing around with it. And I thought that we'd try and do something on the hoof whilst out on track in terms of looking at and evaluating how things were, were going rather than locking ourselves into one particular strategy. So I went with the soft, super soft, super soft run, a two-stopper um, for, for my strategy option for this race. And um, yeah, let's just see how we get on in terms of the start. So quite a lot of wheel spin there, left a big line of 11s down on the track and Bottas has actually got up ahead of us leading into turn one. So we get heavy onto the brakes and uh, get up and around one of the Ferraris, Vettel in fact, and uh, into overtake mode on the IRS as we chase down Valtteri Bottas into turn three. Bit bit of a wide line through there that time around so as Jeff says it was a decentish start I wouldn't say it was electric to be honest but you know it's maintained our position once everything shook out at the beginning of the race so we'll see how we get on against Bob Bottas going um, around the rest of the lap here 
just easing into this corner because it's a bit of a strange twiggle one. And we, we're right onto the back of Bottas, quite slow there at that, that corner, and managed to get the overtake done down the, the back, short back straight, um, to get a bit bumpy on, on the exit of that corner there. And Bottas, a bit of wheel banging going on. And we're in low mode on the ERS as we save up some battery for the longer straights. So as we come to the end of lap one here, we've got Raikkonen and Nain in the lead, Hamilton second and us then in third place with Bottas chasing. And we're going to cut to the end of, or some, somewhere into lap three basically, as we chase Hamilton along the pitch straight at, towards the end of lap three. We've got DRS enabled and I'm in high ERS mode. Not quite got the legs to get past him without a bit of a dive bomb into the first corner, but we managed to make it stick. Although you can see from the proximity sensors, he, he, he was close on our tail as we went through that sequence of corners. We're expecting the tyre grip to start falling off noticeably around now, but this set should be okay for a while longer despite that. So just as Jeff points that out to us, I have a bit of a lock up there, and I'm starting to struggle with the tyres. Got to remember that we have to put a couple, a couple of laps on these for, for qualifying. And that's, I think, having a bit of a bearing on terms of their performance. Okay, here's who we're really fighting today, Ricardo and Ocon. So I just asked Jeff there who we were actually fighting, because although obviously we're in the lead of the race right now, um, I don't see us being able to take it to the, the rest of the field. And as we can see, I've just had a little bit of a mini spin there as I, I went a bit wide through uh, the, the second corner and I'm proud of the the rumble strips it just unbalanced the car and as it did that I, I've allowed Vettel to get past. Uh, I'm not fighting the Ferrari driver so my instinct is to just to let him go in again. Let's increase ERS deployment to up the pace. And as we can see I'm really starting to struggle with the tyres. So much so that I've actually put it off and, and spun the car. And uh, yeah, a bit of a disaster there. You can see that the tyres, if you look at the left hand tyre, you can actually see how badly marked up it is. And I'm really starting to get some, some bad lock ups on uh, as I'm approaching corners. Yeah, and I'm off the circuit once more. Exceeded the track limits, there's a warning for us. So, yeah, I'm really starting to struggle with the tyres. I was hoping to see it out to lap 13, which was the optimum strategy for the soft tyre but yeah there's just no way that we can see this I'm sort of tiptoeing around and decided to, to select the box this lap option from uh, the MFD let the guys know that we're going to pit as I'm off the circuit once again and I'm just losing time I still have Bottas passed and Raikkonen alongside <laughs> overtaking off the circuit as we head towards the penultimate corner and I've gone too deep on the brakes a bit of a learning curve here with the ABS and tyre wear and understanding yes, how hard you can push things. So, Stoffel van Dorn is out of the race. Slow down, maintain a positive delta. Just as I'm about to enter the pit lane, Stoffel van Dorn goes out of the race, which means that everybody else is under VSC and obviously go, go I'm now. in the pit lane. So I should, in theory, gain some time uh, relative to the rest of the field, which is a, just a stroke of pure fortune, you know, never not planned in okay, terms of staying clear of the white line on the exit. Receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross over into the track. You know, I wasn't expecting to, to make that kind of gain if I'm honest, because you know, if, if I'd have if I'd have had the option to pit under the VSC um, by coming down that, that the previous straight and looking at my tire wear and thinking, well yeah, it makes obvious, but I was already locked into that strategy. I'd, I'd made that decision at this point. VSC's ending here and we're now after Verstappen and our teammate Hock on the head. Green flag. A bit of a 
the lock up again into that turn, which is a bit disconcerting as I'm on a brand new set of tyres. Um, straight past Verstappen though, and I switch back down to the RS high, having been in um, overtake, and uh, get the DRS closed and have an attack on my teammate as I take him up the inside, who's now on the soft tyre. Um, and yeah, that was a relatively easy pass considering where we were on the circuit. So yeah, the action just scrolls on a bit there and we can see uh, Charles Leclerc in the distance, but I've locked up uh, going into that corner and unfortunately it's allowed him to get away from me again. It's time to use some of this charge. Managed to catch up to him um, down the DRS straight up the back down on the back of the circuit. Um, I've stayed in high deploy on the, the ERS as we go through the sweeper section, but unfortunately I've got out onto the kerb I just managed to stop it before I hit the barrier, but obviously that's going to have, have flat spotted those tyres significantly. Backwards and forwards, uh, trying to get the, the car back out onto the circuit because I was a bit blocked in, um, didn't want to coll collect anybody. So as we scroll forward to lap 13, I've picked up the pace again, purple sector, and I'm on the back of Nico Hülkenberg. Slower moving cars ahead again. They're on a different strategy. They're on the soft tyre. Uh, can't take there. Bit of a lock up again, and we're going to have to get him on the back straight with DRS, which is all rather easy. I mean, overtake mode. We've got DRS enabled, and I've then got Alonso in front of me. Just come down the gears on the brakes. Just a little lock up, puff of smoke, and we're going to have a look at the back of Alonso through this section. Um, choose perhaps wisely not to attack too much through there um, because you know, you could, the AI could do something a little bit too, uh, too different. So we go on to overtake uh, down the back straight and we've gone past Alonso but Grosjean, uh, it's, a, it's got, a bit, got a bit ragged into that corner unfortunately I've collided with Grosjean uh, but I have gone past him. And as we go out onto lap 14, still picking up time, and I'm going past my teammate Ocon again. Lockups are starting to become a bit of an issue again on lap 14 on the super soft. So as we see Ocon in the background just peel into the pits, and some more lockups at the uh, middle of lap 16, and that's led to another three second penalty. Um, which will be applied at the end of the race. So wherever we are on the circuit come the end of the race, we need to make up three seconds to those drivers around us, otherwise um, we'll, we'll lose positions. I've had enough of these tyres. They're, they're really starting to wear quite hard, so I've decided to box this lap. Out onto the back, DRS strength. As Jeff gives us information about something we've all decided to do. We've already told him we're going to box this lap, but he's told us that we need to, which obviously we do. Team are bolting on another set of soft tyres. I decided to change that in the MFD in the, on the lap that we were coming in on, just purely because obviously we're, we're a bit off strategy now, and I've got 11 laps to do on, on the set of softs. If you remember back to the start of the race, we only actually made 11 laps, I think it was, on the softs in that stint, so we might struggle um, on this particular set of tyres to make it to the end of the race, especially as I'm having more and more trouble with, with locking on the front axle. So we're coming up behind Magnussen into the sweeper section, where we're, we've been pretty quick, actually, compared to the AI through here. And Magnussen just parks it in the middle of the track. Front and end damage on the front wheel. In this lap. And Jeff is telling me that I should box this lap. And as you can see, I'm having major understeer issues. Got Alonso, Alonso trailing me, but I decided to stay out for another lap. Thinking that I may be able to stretch stretch the legs of the car out, maybe another lap, and but I just kept losing time. 
know, I'm making okay. lock-ups and... So we're adjusting the strategy. Yeah. Come in this lap. Not good, unfortunately. We, we, we've been compromised by this front wing damage now because we've got damage on one side of the wing. It's causing us to lock up, it's causing us to understeer across the track and it's not a fun car to drive right now. We're getting overtaken by all the cars that we've already overtaken in this race and unfortunately I think we've really compromised our performance with that damage as we went into the back of the slow moving Magnussen through that sweeper section. As we can see I just can't, can't take the corners at any kind of rate that I would expect to. So. There's Grosjean, we've gone off the circuit, we're trying to keep it on grey stuff and we're not really succeeding in that respect. And there's Ocon, our, our teammate, who's out on the medium tyre um, on this latter part of the stint, which is what we're actually going to dive onto for these last nine laps as I go wide again. Um, just too late on the brakes trying to go into the to like, to like last corner. So we dive on into the pit lane. And we join us on lap 27 because I've just got us to the, 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 the action points towards the end of the race because unfortunately the, this race just fell apart. You know, there's numerous situations where we just didn't handle them very well. Um, and so now I'm reduced to chasing Ericsson, unfortunately. Getting here with DRS open down the, the pitch straight. Uh, but he's coming back at me on the outside there, unsettled the car over the curve, and I can see he's off to my left hand side. So I try the switch back, and we've got him out on the straight there, where I, where I nearly put it into the gravel. But he's, he's alongside us, I've got very little ERS, so we're having to try to defend this, this position with very little ERS left. Two laps of the race to go, and if you remember rightly, we've got that. We got that three second penalty to, to contend with as well at the end of the race. Bit of a really sketchy moment there in the middle of the lap, allows Ericsson to get back past us. A very frustrating performance. Really struggling with the, the car and the behaviour and the handling on, uh, around Bahrain for some reason compared to where I was uh, when I first got to the track. It's, the car's just gone away from me, the performance of this car's not where I expected it to be through the race but you know at the end of the day it is what it is and as we take Ericsson through the sweeper section and put up the inside and out around the last lap and we, we join at the end of the race you can see the fireworks going off and unfortunately it's 16th place it's not what we wanted it's far from ideal it's a good result for Valtteri Bottas, who extends his advantage at the top of the championship. Moving on to the driver of the day then. Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? My driver of the day was Charles Leclerc. He did a cracking job moving through the field, just highlighting why he's so highly rated in the paddock. What about it from your perspective? It wasn't the cleanest race today, was it? You left a lot of paint on the walls today. Were you struggling for grip or did you just misjudge some corners? No, I just had a Magnuson shaped idiot in my way through the sweeper section going too slowly. Great, well that's everything. So yeah, as we can see, we lost out in terms of the teammate battle on, on that particular um, race, but we're still leading the rivalry. I think we went two all actually on that particular one purely because of my qualifying pace in comparison to him. So we're picking up the resource points, picked up a bonus for the th getting above 13th place in the last Grand Prix, which is a, a big bonus and gives us some more spending power on the resources. But as you can see, I've taken a massive, massive dent in my reputation in terms of both our team and the other teams because of that performance. So yeah, we, we're just going to go back now to the R&D tree and have another look around and see what we can do. We've got uh, just shy of 2,000 R&D points, or resource points, sorry, that we can spend uh, going forward. Um, I'm having a look at the chassis side of things in terms of what we can upgrade. And as you can see, we've got a morale modifier because of how we've talked about the, the chassis in the interviews uh, with Claire. So that, that if we chose to take another chassis upgrade, we'd get some additional uh, percentage points because of that. Uh, we, we've already got one locked in so we, we can't really take another 
upgrade unless we work on the um, factory side of things. But what I'm more concerned about at this point in the season is our durability when it comes to the power unit. Because if you remember now that with the, this season of Formula One, we only actually have two energy stores, two MG UKs and two control electronics to make it through the season without getting penalties. So whether this is shrewd or not, I've decided that I'm going to improve the durability of the MG UK and the energy the energy store in order that you know we might not have to take some penalties to, towards the end of the season, uh, which could give us an advantage compared to some of our competitors on the grid. So that's it for this show. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode. I know it's a bit shorter than the last one, and that's my aim from now on is to get them shorter uh, every single time. We'll, we'll do less and less of the practice stuff unless I'm, I'm making changes. But if you'd like to hit me up with a like or smash the subscribe button, I really appreciate any comments that you might have about this episode or the previous episode. And moreover, I'd like your opinion in terms of what we do with the assists and the AI level. For Bahrain, I'm up in the AI to 70, but I'm really not sure about using the gamepad and using um, the... Um, where to leave the traction control I think I'll leave that on medium but it's the ABS I'm str really struggling with the ABS level and until we can start to work on uh, more intricate setups which I may start to do uh, the next race in China um, you know it may be a bit of a struggle in terms of using the uh, not using the ABS level uh, certainly because of the way that we were locking up and, and having quite a, a significant amount of tie wear in that last Grand Prix. So hit me up in the comments, let me know what you think we should do, whether we should drop the ABS level back on um, just for, for the next episode so that we've got a bit more confidence going into the corners or whether we should work on setup and I'll basically work on setup in one of the free practice sessions and we'll go through changing some of the, the, the setup parameters and see how we can get the car to work and behave better in that respect. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode and look forward to the next race in China.